went forward and defended us uh, and saved the world. Came home and didn't look for a pat on the back, went right to work. Started families and uh, really provided wealth and opportunity like the world's never seen. And now in the autumn of their lives, You know, if you live in uh, rural America, 
you've got to work together to support it.
And you know what the insurance companies say? The insurance companies say, well, look, if it was approved care, we'd pay, we'd, we'd pay more for it. So we, we'd pay for more. Here, this is the point. Changing these guidelines will bring forward better treatment protocols, and I believe better insurance company coverage, and ultimately, that will bring forward cures and solutions. We passed this bill on the floor of the United States House, and it was constituent driven. Constituent driven. Because that's, I think, the, that's, that's really the key point here. Is, is the fact that government is supposed to listen to uh, to our people. We are meant to be self-governing and, and to, to provide a voice for the folks in our area. And that's what this bill represents. Look, we brought forward legislation that helps with our roads and bridges, infrastructure bills, service transportation bills. This is also very important to job creation in our area uh, and to give us confidence in our roads and bridges. Storm relief. I've spent a lot of time here in Green County because of the impact uh, of Hurricanes Irene and Lee. And we have given a voice to our folks who have suffered from this storm. And we brought appropriations, appropriations resources at the federal level to work with local level resources to recover from the storm and to take action going forward to protect people and property from uh, natural weather events. So this is important constituent driven le legislation as well to help our communities rise to their God given Tourism. You know, in the budget, uh, Joe had mentioned about the budget. You know, we brought forward our first federal budget in five years. Now look, families have budgets, villages, towns have budgets, counties have budgets, states have budgets, but we hadn't had a federal budget in five years. That's unacceptable. That is absolutely unacceptable. And I'm part of a group, No Labels. This is a group that is uh, Republicans and Democrats that are looking to bring functionality back to the government. We brought forward a simple bill, no budget, no pay. And that was a catalyst when we, because you know, the American people supported that, and that became law. The president signed it into law, and that was a catalyst for the Senate passing its first budget in four years, which set the conditions for the House and the Senate to work together that got the first federally enacted budget in five years. That helped with the sequester. We have important domestic and national security priorities that needed to be addressed, and that federal budget did. And supporting a, a compromise like that is really important. And unfortunately, my opponent opposed that, and that's another reason why he doesn't have the experience or temperament uh, to serve in government right now, because it's important that we have a budget. In that budget, we had money for tourism, which also, uh, along with agriculture, is a major driver of our local economies, is tourism. And that Hudson River, uh, that Heritage Act that supports it, has helped in this area, help promote our tourism, so that we have folks from all the metropolitan area and beyond that will come here and enjoy what we enjoy on this beautiful day. Veterans, I want you to know that uh, I was listening. You know, many of you came to me and said that you know, what was going on in Arizona and other parts of the uh, country was very disturbing. And of course, as a veteran myself, I agree. And I want you to know that we brought forward the most significant somebody who I had high regard for, 
Uh, quite frankly, he needed to go because we were moving in a different direction. But in fairness to General Sinsecki, there were reforms that he was trying to enact that his top lieutenants were signing. So one of the things we did with the VA bill is allowed for, if we're going to hold the Secretary accountable, we're built on a system of accountability and responsibility. If we're going to hold the Secretary accountable, then the Secretary needs to have the authority to hire and fire. We did this in this new law. And then the other thing is more audits, including unannounced audits just to make sure that we're making the improvements that we believe are necessary. So I want you to know that that's constituent driven too, that we heard what you said about this and we took action to make a difference on it. Energy. It was mentioned earlier, George touched on it too. Look, I remember what this is like growing up in a working class family. You know, my dad, you know, when he was working, things were good. We had a living wage, and, but my dad spent a lot of the late 70s laid off. And that was at the same time that the gas and home heat prices were spiking. So I know what this is like, I know firsthand, and it just pains me. I'm doing everything I can to drive down energy costs, including uh, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC, had arbitrarily raised our rates when they brought forward these new capacity zones. We don't want these new capacity zones. We don't think that they're right, and there's bipartisan opposition to it, and my colleague, Sean Patrick Maloney, and I authored legislation and brought forward an amendment on the floor of the House that passed, and it, uh, it, it reverse the decision of FERC in terms of trying to raise our rates here. So now look, it's passed the House, we're waiting on action in the Senate, and then we need the President to sign it. But in the meantime, we have, uh, Sean Maloney and I have called on FERC to vacate their decision. And here's the good news. Just yesterday, we heard from FERC that they're going to review their decision. On the 5th of November, they're going to review their decision, and I hope that they reverse their decision. And if they do that, that's going to immediately lower our electricity costs by six to ten percent. So we're going to keep our we're going to keep working on this until we get this done. But this was wrong. What FERC did it was wrong what they did, and we want them to recognize that and vacate that decision. And meanwhile, we're going to continue to work at lowering your energy costs. We believe this is important for hardworking families. It's also important for small businesses because we want them to be in a, a profitable situation where they can expand and hire new workers. Education, education something I know near and dear to your heart as well. You're thinking about your grandchildren. And I want you to know this. I believe in how I just came from Saugerties Middle School. I'm so incredibly proud of our students and our teachers. Teachers are special. Teachers are special. They already know they're not going to be rich, but they get to be rich at heart by educating, inspiring, inculcating. And I think the best approach when it comes to education is local empowerment. Local empowerment. And that means the resources that are necessary, and that also means the autonomy. You know, national goals, I think that's appropriate. An articulation of what we think are the uh, skills, attributes um, of successful graduates. There's a difference between goals and standards. When you tie resources to that and punitive actions, that's the problem. Because so many schools that are trying to make a difference, I mean, those are the schools that are trying to improve and then you bring forward uh, this common core, the problem is those are the schools that don't end up getting the resources. They're trying to do better. That's why this approach, the common core approach is wrong. And also, it's an invasion of privacy of our students, too. There's so many things wrong with that. And I, I, I'm for a different approach that empowers our localities with the resources and the autonomy, or ultimately, for school boards, for teachers, parents, and administrators, that they can come together and make decision, final decisions on curriculum and approach, or pedagogy. That's what, that's what I'm for, because I believe that not only our teachers have the right intentions and motivations, but also those who come forward for school boards, and those that serve in administrative capacity, that when we empower them, they're going to make good choices for our localities. And incidentally, they're also accountable, right? I mean, look, some people who look at, look at my position and they'll say, well, you know, you must not... Uh, support accountability. Absolutely not. I mean, I live the life of accountability in you. It's a question of where the appropriate judgment is for that accountability. And the appropriate uh, level is at the local level. So we're fighting for that. I'm the uh, author of a bill that rolls back the onerous high stakes testing regime. And this is really important. It's a bipartisan bill. Uh, Kirsten Cinema from Arizona, a Democrat. We are the co-authors of this bill. It's supported by the teachers. In fact, I'm proud to have the support of the teachers. Uh, not every day that you hear of a Republican 
gets endorsement of NYSE. Uh, <laughs> listen, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. You know, I just, uh, and so let me, let me close with uh, a couple points here. And, and, and one is on keeping us safe. Look, I mean, since I was 17, I put the uniform on and I uh, only retired four years ago, a little over four years ago. I believe in every fiber in my body in protecting this cherished way of life. And <coughs> I promise you that my work every day will do everything I can to keep you safe. And I want to do that smartly. Smart, based on my experience. I don't think arming those quote unquote moderate Syrian rebels was the right way to go. They're militarily incompetent and they're politically not trustworthy. So I'm doing everything I can to convince my colleagues and the administration of a smarter way forward. But I want you to know that I take that very seriously, that you know, we're gonna protect our people. And I hope that going forward, I'll have uh, the opportunity to engage and maybe move this in a direction where I think it'll be better for our country. My final point is this. I want you to believe. I want you to believe in us. If you turn on the news today, it seems like everywhere you go, it's about negativity, divide, and decline. I don't believe that. I don't believe that for anything in the world. You know, I, this is, I think our best days are still in front of us. And really what we need to do is find a vision that we can all rally behind and get there. And so that's why I'm running for re-election here. Uh, looking forward to this election. Uh, I'm fighting for every vote. Republicans, conservatives, independents, and Democrats. Fight for all of us. Because you know, I believe that the representation that I'm bringing forward, yes, I'm a, I'm a Republican, and I'm proud to be a Republican, but I'm an American first. And I'm doing everything I can to bring our country together so that we can all achieve a better day. So thank you very much for coming out.